Good evening YouTube and here is your results video for Monday March 1st and your projections for Wednesday March 2nd 2016 it's tomorrow's NBA FanDuel players we're gonna go podcast style for the results starting with Roto Grinders who stored a 299.3 let me go ahead and focus on to them Alright, and as you can see from their thing right there at the top, not so bad. I mean, you have Russell, uh, was pretty much a minimum crowd, playing almost 10 times value, so that was an excellent reel. Okay, really nice job, Roto Grinders. Very, very happy with that one. Okay, so next up we're going to go on to Roto Wire, who scored a 320.6. And this was one hour before lock. So actually they had a different lineup, but they changed it at the last minute based on injuries. And so I gotta give them some impression for that. So check out rotowire.com, guys, if you want an updated lineup that will pay something like this. Uh, 320.6, Kemba Walker and Russell at the top. The only thing that really didn't pay off there was Oladipo, and pretty much everyone had him. Great job on that one, guys. Okay, next up is Fantasy Pros. Fantasy Pros only scored a 250.6, and that was without me pulling Curry. And I couldn't pull Curry because we had no news as to whether that was going to happen in time. So honestly, how could we tell? So Curry got a big fat zero right up there at the top, and the total score on this was 250.6, and not very good. If I had been able to do pull pull Curry out and just knowing and I dropped in Lilliard who is not a bad choice second highest on the board this would have scored a 293 but without the news being known they took a gamble I suppose and that's where you end up okay next up is Daily Fantasy Cafe and they scored a 293 for real they didn't need a substitution and their 293 score had Russell as well with Lilliard with 42 their problem was Iguodala, and they did say he was a game-time decision, but without giving me an update in time, I wasn't able to pull him out, and that left him at 293, a little below 300. Okay, next up, let's go on to my recommended daily cash lineup that I told you guys to do yesterday at night, and I won this. It was a $5.50-50 entry. There it is. Total score 303. Like you guys know, you want 300 to get cash usually. The breaking line was 295.5, if you can see at the top there. Um, I got hurt by Ola Depot too, but just about everyone else paid out the value that I needed to. Green did great in the absence of Curry. Horford came through with some overtime in the end for me there. Carmelo paid value, even though I didn't expect to do. Clay Thompson did great again in the absence of Curry, another good call that we all talked about. So this was a great cash lineup. I mean, you don't need to land in the first to win cash. It's the same amount whether you're at the first or 50th. Okay, now let's go on to the GPP lineup that I gave to you guys yesterday. The GPP actually scored a 329.1, guys. And you can see there, I won it on a 50-50 $2, I won the $2 shot for 6 and I won the $1 swap for 3 And we'll go ahead and pull that lineup up again and see where the scores came out. Drajic, Russell, Thompson, Oladipo, again, the only one that was hurting me there, but every other selection just paid off like crazy. And at the last second, guys, I did a final GPP on my own because sometimes it's nice to have something that you didn't put out there to anyone else. And this GPP also won, guys. You can see it was a 319.5. The $2 for 360 is at the top, the 2 for 6, and then the 1 for 2. Now, guys, every time I take a tournament, I always hedge it with a 50-50 because there's nothing worse than scoring and losing by just a little. Although I want you guys to notice something. The cash line to win that 50-50 tournament today was 305.3. And the line to win the GPP was all 307. The line to actually win the $1 one was for 302. 
If you scored a 303, you would have won the $1 GPP tournament and at the same time lost a 50-50 cash lineup. So let's go just to show you about all the, what's going on with FanDuel and how much analysis is going into these games and how people are starting to study what they're doing and how they're taking care of everything. So anyways, you saw that. As for final winnings, we can go ahead and just go on, zoom on to that right there. It wasn't too bad. It was $33.20, which is, you know, you'll take it. I don't know anyone that will complain about getting $33 and entered 17, winning 33.20. I'm pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and just go ahead and focus on what I'm going to go do it here. Give you the projections for tomorrow. You guys go ahead and do with them whatever you want, okay? All right, so real fast. We're going to go into point guard for tomorrow. We have Westbrook at 58, Wall at 47, Lilliard at 40, Lowry at 36, Walker at 41, Thomas at 33, Holiday at 34, Rose at 30, Conley at 33, Hill at 25, and Cole at 23. For shot guard, we have Harden at 49. That would be higher, but there's blowout risk. Middleton at 43, DeRozan at 42, McCollum at 28, yeah, it's a little low, that's where my computers are saying it's going, sorry guys, Depot at 26, and that's from, is reflecting today's performance as well as lowered minutes, Wiggins at 29, Ellis at 40, is that Ellis at 43, oh no, Ellis at 27, Bryant at 27 if he plays, and that's likely considering he sat today, Batum at 21, Barton at 20, Barton at 32. Ooh, look at that one. Barton at 32 looks like a really good value. And Levine at 27 if he starts. Um, for small forward, we have Durant at 55. It's a great value if you need to park some salary. George at 44. Ante Tok Unpoko at 42. Leonard at 40. Hayward at 34. Ariza at 34. Barnes at 31. Porter at 29, and, oh, sorry about that, guys, Caspi at 25. And at power forward, projections are for Davis at 55 if he plays. This will change the whole team around if he doesn't play, so you're going to have to watch injuries and everything on that again. I should have more news on that for the cash lineups and GPP optimals and stuff in the morning. But I have favors at 42. Aldridge is only at 35. Again, there's a lot of risk on my computers with that, so he's lowered. I have Zebo at 38, which looks like a good value right now. Diang at 36, which also looks like a really good value. He didn't play, in it, and his absence was for personal reasons. There's no injury or illness or anything that we know of. There's possibly a death in his family. Um, if Ferry had plays and coming up next, he's projected at 34 against the Lakers. It's a great spot for him against that team. Solinger at 29. Parker for 27, Randall for 25, Williams for 28, Ibaka for 29, Anderson for 48. But that's if Davis doesn't play. Now, if he does, that gets slashed all the way in half to 24. Morris for 23, and Turner for 27. Finally, at center, projections are for Cousins at 57, Gasol at 44 if he starts, Towns at 47, Drummond at 39, Vucevic at 42, Howard at 36, that's being slightly lowered again by blowout risk, Jordan at 34, Gortat at 35, Gobert at 33, Jokic at 26, Jefferson at 23, and Plumlee at 22. Okay, I'll have optimal cash lineups as well as I own recommended cash and GPP lineups out tomorrow, just like I said. I hope you all cashed with me tonight. Have a wonderful evening. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Go out and go win some money.